All right, guys, uh, our guest today, John Cupis, CEO of HSource, in a time when we, medical equipment supply is so vital in saving lives for uh, hospitals and the medical industry in general. Uh, our guest today and company HSource have uh, developed innovative technology aimed at solving some of those supply chain disruptions in the medical industry, as I mentioned. Uh, John Cubis, CEO of HSource, joining us today uh, to discuss a very busy time for you and the company. Uh, John, great to have you. Uh, first off, I hope you're well. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, HSource in general to start. We've had a little bit of a pivot, still in the medical industry and a biotech company overall. Well, first, it's really good to be here. Thanks for having me on, and yes, you're right. There was a pivot. When COVID hit last spring in, in March, the hospital stopped elective surgery. So uh, our original model was to move medical supplies, uh, both um, medical supplies, capital equipment, and pharmacy products between hospitals and from direct from manufacturers to hospitals. So when COVID hit, all the elective surgery stopped. And so a lot of that activity stopped. So it was necessary for us to pivot toward PPE and to begin to leverage the technology that we had built to move those assets between hospitals to allow hospitals to link directly with manufacturers and suppliers and also expand it to government later. So in a time when obviously this is very top of mind for everyone and especially if anyone knows anyone who you know works in the medical industry and has been affected by uh, the pandemic in general. Let's talk a little bit about uh, you know the opportunity here as far as the business is concerned. I want to get into the, the technology specifically and the platform as well. There's also a blockchain tie into this that we'll, we'll discuss but uh, let's discuss uh, some opportunities that have uh, come uh, both in the U.S. and also in the European marketplace? Well, you're right. Well, we I spent a lot of time in Europe this summer, so we made some very good connections. And we are now working direct with some of the European governments, uh, different countries, and different states within those governments. So that's uh, that's been exciting. And I would watch the press over the next few weeks. You'll see some pretty interesting announcements with PPE, where they're excited to go to a reliable source, cut all these layers out and the cost layers, the brokers, all the different groups, and to work directly with a trusted supplier through a trusted platform uh, to a trusted buyer. So we're pretty excited about that in Europe. And we've done the same thing in the U.S. for some large hospital groups and also with states uh, and local governments and, and first responders. And we're pretty excited to... After the uh, new administration comes in, we, we think we'll have some pretty exciting things to talk about with the federal government as well. Yeah, busy uh, busy week uh, in the U.S., to say the least. Let's, let's talk about the platform for anyone not necessarily familiar with the company overall and the platform, the software itself. Tell us a little bit about what this is exactly and how it affects hospitals. Well, again, I'll start with originally and then the pivot. Originally, there was a lot of excess product in hospitals. They would have excess things in the OR, in the cath lab, in the heart lab, and we would allow hospitals to trade those with each other. But what's happened now with the pivot, um, we do all the FDA track and trace, which is unusual. So we link to the FDA recall database, we also do the pharmacy tracking and we meet all the current DSCSA standards for pharmacy. We also meet the 2024 standards. So what does that mean? It means we track by NDC code. We track if there's any recall. We track if there are any, any quality issues through it. And by meeting the 2024 standards, we can also track the serialized pharma product, and that's to avoid counterfeits and to really tighten up the distribution in the healthcare supply chain. So we already meet those standards on our platform. And so when I said that we're a trusted platform for a government or a hospital network, that's why. Because we're not only moving a product like an e-commerce platform, you have full visibility into where it came from, where it moved to, who has ownership and custody along the way to the end user. And, and in this case, it's curious you say that uh, as far as uh, knockoffs are concerned. Is that a big problem in this industry? 
huge. I'll right. give you an example from uh, from Mission Donation. If you look at like the Gates Foundation, I'm going to use a report that they did. Uh, about 70% of the drugs uh, had were the wrong efficacy. So they would buy it from a manufacturer, uh, but it might be 70% of the efficacy, even though it was a supposedly the same product. Or um, people would, if you look at even some of the things, nitrile gloves and PPE, there are knockoffs. People will put it in a box of a name manufacturer. And if you have, you're tracking that serial number and that lot number and verify that with the manufacturer, you avoid the counterfeiting or you make it much harder for the people to do. The company recently developed a relationship with uh, E and Y. Tell us a little bit about that relationship and how it got started. Well, it started back in 2019 and we worked with them on their blockchain. They're a leader in the blockchain technologies and they're just a tremendous group. Uh, I should say that uh, quite a few years ago before I joined uh, AidSource, I was a national lead at the old Ernst & Young, which they renamed to the vernacular EY. And, uh, and I was in the healthcare space for software for healthcare. And uh, anyway, we began to work with them. We worked with their excellent uh, global blockchain team, and uh, they, they helped us develop our blockchain strategy. Now, John, we everyone talking about the vaccine uh, right now. It's top of mind. It's top of headlines when you listen to any news broadcast these days. The vaccine rollout currently underway globally. Is that something that uh, a source can participate in? And if so, tell us how that is progressing. Uh, great question. Uh, yes, you can't look at any news outlet and see that there aren't issues with the distribution of the vaccine. One of the tricks with this vaccine is that you have to have the ability to track what's called cold line storage. It has very strict temperature control requirements for the vaccine. But we are involved in, in discussions with some different government entities uh, and some of the manufacturers uh, specifically out of India to help distribute the product to governments that may not have the same access as, say, the United States or Canada or some of Europe. There's a, a real need, for instance, in the Caribbean, and uh, there's a real opportunity to help there or in, in parts other than, say, Brazil or Argentina and South America. So we're, we're working on that. It's early, but we're, we're very hopeful. And because we track that serial number in the full pharmacy from start to finish, uh, there is an opportunity for us there, and we're, we're working on that as we speak. John Cupa, CEO of HSource, joining us today. Uh, John, tell us a little bit about this space in general. Is there competition, and if so, what does the marketplace look like for alternatives uh, for both hospitals and other medical professionals to use? Uh, right now, we don't have a direct competitor. So that's, that's the good news. And the opportunity right now, when the pandemic hit, um, you've seen all the articles, there was a lot of difficulty in getting the product for the hospitals. And you, you saw the horror stories where frontline workers didn't have what they needed. So a lot of the hospitals right now are moving toward what's called self-sourcing or moving direct to the manufacturer and maybe not going through a distributor or a GPO. And our platform is uniquely positioned to help that. And so we're really excited about that. And we have groups that are looking at our platform. I would look for press coming up on that, that uh, people will start to use it. So it's a great opportunity for us to um, allow that hospital to control their supply chain, uh, direct with the manufacturer, direct with the distributors. It takes a few layers out, so it should reduce the cost and improve the just-in-time process. And the other thing that really differentiates our platform, um, I'm gonna use an example that we're working with currently. And again, well, people will hear more about over the next few weeks. But our platform isn't just a distribution platform. We can take product, but let's take an example of a state in the US where you buy product, let's say it's nitrile gloves and masks for the frontline workers and it goes into 12 warehouses in that state. Well, our software can track that product in the warehouse. It can track all the expiration dates, and then it can also manage the flow of that product to the individual hospitals, the uh, 
agencies, the police, the emergency response, wherever that product needs to go, we can track that and manage that for that state or, or government entity. And that's, that's where we really have pivoted to. You'll see announcements around that, and they're really pretty exciting. Uh, there's obviously a massive opportunity, you know, currently because of the pandemic and everything that's happening. Let's look down the road a little bit, John, best case scenario. Let's say in the spring or the summer, uh, you know, a little bit further along, we get into a point where the pandemic is starting to be controlled. We have the vaccine rollout. Things are getting a little bit better. What does the marketplace for this product look like in a post-pandemic world? The people that have done it well and have been dependable and reliable will continue to be part of the medical supply chain and will be self-sourcing and we're not totally relying on PPE. We will be moving other products through the platform. We have been negotiating with different suppliers for that. And again, post the inauguration, we expect some really interesting uh, announcements where we're working not just with PPE, but general requisition for uh, parts of the U.S. government and possibly other countries through the platform, as well as for hospitals. So that's the full pivot. We're, PPE is going to have a slowdown, no question. Is the vaccine, you begin to hit saturation, no question it will. But if we were the dependable supplier now, people will use the platform to move the four to 700 products that they routinely need in the hospitals because it was steady and dependable at a time of crisis. And an important marketplace uh, going forward uh, in the future as well, the point. Uh, John Cupa, CEO of uh, HSource, uh, a real pleasure talking to you today. Uh, best of luck going forward. I hope you'll come back and give us an Thank update. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. My pleasure. Uh, there we go, guys. We'll look at uh, HSource, HSI on the Venture Exchange. You can check it out on the uh, OTC market, HSCF as well, guys.